Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another four-part harmony tutorial video. Today we will be looking at the three variations of the imperfect cadence and we'll be learning how to write them in both closed and extended position within a major key. The three major keys that I'll be dealing with today is D major, A major and F major. Three rather basic keys. So I hope that you enjoy this video and let's just get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to know for our imperfect cadence is its figuring. There are three variations, and the first one that we will be dealing with in D major is the variation of chord 1 to chord 5. A simple way to remember your imperfect cadence figuring is that it's always a chord to chord 5. So for our first cadence here we'll be dealing with chord 1 to chord 5. In the next key we'll be dealing with chords 4 to 5 and then finally chords 2 to 5. So as always put down your working out and for chord 1 that would be the basic triad is D F sharp A and chord 5 the triad there is A C sharp and E. So I like to put that working out down there. You can make use of this if you want to. You don't have to, but as a beginner, it's always a good idea to do so. And you can then cross off what you've put, what you've written down as you go along. Okay, so for our first chord, we're starting on the root because we're in root position, and we're going to go and go ahead and put down our D. That is our root of that chord. And because we're writing a closed position voicing, there's a few options we could go about this, but the, the simplest way is to just simply go up to a D above middle C there. And then finally to the third, the F sharp, and then ultimately landing on the A in the soprano. For the next chord, chord five, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We could either go to an A just below middle C over there, or low A. It's really up to you how you want to voice this. But I will go for the purposes of this exercise to the A there. And then to keep it neat and tidy in terms of voice leading, we're going to simply rise that tenor. Oh, well, sorry, not rise. We're going to actually lower it by step to the C sharp, the third. And then we're going to drop our alto by step to the E, the fifth there and then simply double our root in the soprano, keeping it constant between the two voice parts. And there we have a closed position voicing with chord five. Why is it closed position? Because no voices, well, sorry, no notes of the triad can be found between the upper three voice parts. The upper three voice parts, namely being tenor, alto, and soprano. So if we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for an extended position chord cadence, we put down our figuring first and foremost. And again, put down your, your triad so that you have your working out there if you need to do so. And then just simply start the chord. So in this case, DFA, but now we're in extended position. So we can go about it in a similar fashion. Um, extended position this time means that we can find notes from the, the given triad within the upper three voice parts in between them. So often what I like to do, especially in root position, is go up to the fifth in the tenor. And then you've got a few options, but the most obvious would be to go to the F sharp the third, and then finish off with the root in the soprano. Going on to chord five, A, C sharp, E. Let's go to the A at the bottom in root position. 
Now again, we have a few options, but the obvious one here is to keep your tenor constant. So now we've doubled our root. We drop the alto down by step to the E. F sharp moving down by step to E is quite, quite nice and natural. And then we simply finish off with the third in the soprano, moving down by step again. And there we have a nice extended imperfect cadence going from chords one to five. And by following good voice leading techniques like moving up and down by step and keeping certain voice parts constant, we avoid such inaccuracies like parallel fifths and octaves. And in this case, if you were to go through this, you would find that there would be none of that just because we kept things constant and moving up or down by step. So that is it for chord one to five. We'll now be moving on to chords four to five in A major. Okay, so for the next variation, we're dealing with chords four to chord five the second variation of the imperfect cadence. I've gone ahead and changed the key signature. We're now in A major. Something I forgot to do in the previous segment is to just identify the key. It's always a good idea to do that. Helps you sort of just remember where you're at. And now chord four to chord five. So chord five is EGB. And chord four being D, F sharp, A. Sorry, I meant to say E, G sharp, B over there for chord five. So we're in DFA again, going to chord five, which is now E, G, B. Okay, so something you're going to notice now in the bass line is that with chords four to five, it simply rises up by step in root position. So we'll go ahead and put down our D over there. Now again, you know, with four part harmony, there's always many options to do one thing, but for closed position, just for this demonstration, I'm just gonna go the simple root again and just go up the octave to a D and a tenor. Then F sharp, the third in alto, and A in the soprano. Another thing that I forgot to do in the previous segment is to split the stems. So something you should always remember is that your bass voice, the stem goes down, your tenor stem goes up, and the exact same thing for alto and soprano. Alto going down and soprano going up. Onto our chord five, now we're going EGB. So E is in the bass in reposition. Now what is the most logical move here? The D, if we go up to an E, then we're gonna get what is known as parallel octaves, so we need to change this and make sure that we're not going up to an E, otherwise we've got an octave between bass and tenor in the previous chord and our next chord, which results in a parallel octave movement. So the next best situation is to simply come down to a B, our fifth, in the tenor part. Double our root now in the alto, E coming down there and then we've only got to go to a G in the soprano the third again making sure that we have our stems in position like so okay so for our extended position voicings again we're going to make use of chord four to chord five, but this time in an extended position. So again, chord four, it's D, F sharp, A. So D in the bass, and then what we're gonna do is go to the A, the fifth in the tenor, and then F sharp in the alto, and finally end off with a nice root at the top, the D right at the top. Again, making sure that our stems are facing the correct way. Now for chord five, it's EGB again. So 
we're gonna go up to the E. Now you must be careful here. The obvious, you know, mistake is that your tenor voice can rise by step to the to the B, but then what you're gonna get is what is known as parallel fifths between bass and tenor in chord four and bass and tenor in chord five. So what can one do to change that? Well, instead of going up to the B, you can simply drop the previous chord by step down to the G. So we're gonna now have the G sharp in the bass, sorry, in the uh, tenor. And then what we can do next is to, again, just simply move our, neck, our previous chords alto down by step to the E. And then right at the top, we have only one more option, and that is to include the fifth. So there you have a, an extended position voicing for chords four to five and a closed position voicing for chords four to five. And there we have it. The final segment is going to be chords two to five in the key of F major. So let's just get right into it. All right. So the final variation of the imperfect cadence is now chord two to chord five. Chord two is a substitute chord for chord four. I don't want you to worry too much about that at this stage. We're going to do a separate video later down the line um, around substitute chords. But what you must remember in terms of figuring is that chord two is a minor triad in a major key and that it is written as a lowercase two in Roman numerals. Let us identify our key now and that is F major. And then you can go ahead and write down your working. So chord two in F major, F, G, so G, B, D. And for chord five, it is F, A, C, so C, E, G. A nice keg over there. All right, so again, as per usual, get down your bass notes. In this case, we're in root position still, and that is going to be a nice G. So you have an option to either go up or down. For the purposes of this, I think we will go... Let's go down. The next note is our tenor, and I'm going to actually go ahead and write that quite high as a D. We must double our root and then never forget the third. So for the next chord or note, our alto, I'm going to go to a G. And then for our soprano, I'm going to finally finish with that third. And you can already hear that it's, that it's got that nice minor third there in F major. All right, on to chord five, C, E, G. Get down your bass. I'm going to go over there. Then our tenor. It's going to make sense in this case to simply move down by step to a C, middle C in this case. And now we have some options. Um, we have doubled our root. We've still got to get our third in and our fifth. So in this case, we can either keep our, well, we can keep our alto constant. But we need to make sure that we're going to follow correct voice leading techniques here and that there are no fifths or anything like that. So let us move down to an E. And then our soprano is actually going to take that G. And now we have a nice closed position voicing. We're not overlapping because the previous chords alto and now chord five soprano are on. They're sharing the same line, but they're not overlapping. So therefore, it's it's all it's all okay. And because the range is quite spread out here, you know, you're you're starting to see a bit more of a a sharing of a similar line, not overlapping. Onto extended position again, it's the same chords. That is chord two to chord five. Remembering lowercase two and uppercase five. 
same triad, GBD and CEG. So let's get our base down. I'm going to stick with that slow G. And this time around, I'm actually going to go to a B in the tenor. In the alto, we can go to a, well, let's maybe go to the D over there. And then we'll finally finish off with a B in the soprano. This is an open position voicing because we would find a G between alto and soprano from the triad and between tenor and alto. Would we find anything there? No, not in this case. So that works out okay. Nice and extended. Chord 5, C, E, G. So here we have an option to simply rise by step to a C, which seems to be pretty good. We also have an option for the alto to to uh, go down by step to a C, so we should bear that in mind. And then our soprano, in this case B, also rises quite nicely to a C. Of course, we need to just make sure that we're not, you know, we're not going to have any parallel fifths or octaves. This previous alto to soprano is a sixth, so it should be all good to go to a C at the top there and an E which already covers our doubling. And then we simply need to come down to a G. So that's what I'm gonna do for this. I'm gonna to go to a G over here in the tenor. In the alto, I'm gonna rise up to an E. And then in the soprano, I'm gonna rise up to a C. And that is it. We have now completed an extended 2-5 or 2-5 imperfect cadence in F major. Okay, and there we have a 2-5. Now in later harmony tutorials, we will actually be dealing with progressions. And this 2-5 is quite a classic progression, often resolving to the 1. Um, so if you were to go ahead by yourself now and write out these 2-5 progressions now, go ahead and, and uh, experiment by, by writing a, a chord 1 of F major, pursuing well, not pursuing, following the chord five and see how it sounds. It's got quite a nice resolution to the progression. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed, um, enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and maybe subscribing. It really does help us. Um, we're also open to doing any other tutorials that you may want. So if you have any further questions on four part harmony, um, please do let us know in the comments down below and we'll be sure to address them and, and hopefully make some videos in the future. Anyway, it's been, it's been fun doing this with you guys. My name is Murray and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.